Hi everyone, this is Juan Seal again. Now it's time to do another review, and this will be the last movie review for this year. So as I said on my previous review, which is Sonic um, Gems Collection, that was the last game review of the year, and now it's time for the last movie review of the year. And that is none other than Finding Nemo. Holy crap. This has to be one of my most favorite movies of all time. I grew up watching this movie. Ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to get the DVD. And ever since it was released on DVD, I got the DVD. Twice, that is, because because back in 2003, I got the DVD, but then it got taken away. I don't know, it was really scratched, but then I had to get a new one three years later in 2006. And then recently, about a couple years ago, I got the VHS version, and I have to admit, the VHS version is pretty good. It's the last Pixar movie to have a clamshell case, believe it or not. And if you're wondering what's in the background right here, I got a new Coke fridge if you're wondering what that noise is coming from. But yeah, Finding Nemo. One of my favorite movies, as well as one of the best Pixar movies out there. So what is it about? Well, it has a clownfish. A clownfish named Marlin. And he has a wife. And next thing you know, um, some giant eel shark thing starts killing his wife off screen along with all their eggs. So they have eggs. One of them happens to be still there, and that one is Nemo. So... I guess after his wife's death, Marlin decided to take care of his one and only child because he lost 399 of them because there are well over 400 of them. That's a lot of kids. Well, I guess it's because Nemo is just so curious on going to see the ocean and, and Marlin's so, so worried about him, he just doesn't want to lose him. And guess what? He does lose him eventually during his field trip at the drop-off. And next thing you know, Nemo gets kidnapped by a bunch of divers and it's up to Marlin to save Nemo. So, he runs into this one character, this blue fish, named Dory, voiced by the talk show host, Ellen DeGeneres. And I have to admit, Dory is also a great highlight in this movie. It's so amazing that Dory got her own movie earlier this year. So, Dory is really funny. She's known for having a short-term memory loss, so she forgets things so easily. So that's pretty much what her character is, she forgets things. But then she ends up remembering after repeating everything that she knows, like for example, the location. The location where um, where Nemo is at, and where did Nemo go? At a dentist tank, a fish tank at a dentist's office in Australia, because they're at Sydney, Australia. I have to admit, it was pretty interesting seeing um, 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 Marlin and Dory being so many colorful characters. There was a shark named Bruce, there was the the sea turtles named uh, Crush, and that's the sea turtle right there, that's Crush, along with a bunch of other sea turtles. They ran into jellyfish, they were trapped in a whale, they were going through a lot of crazy um, fish and other sea animals. And then finally, once when they got out of the whale, they were finally out to, to Sydney, Australia, and they just had to find a boat where they could find Nemo. And it wasn't until they ran into a, up a stork named, um, named Nigel. Or Pelican, my bad. It's not a stork, it's a pelican. So they had to go up there, but then it turns out that they failed because I guess there was so much ruckus going on when Nemo was trying to get taken away by this one crazy um, Australian girl named Darla. And yeah, she seems very vicious. She just keeps on shaking the back to kill fish. That happened in, in a bunch of other fish that the fish tank gang ends up mentioning. So, there are so many characters in this movie that are so memorable. The tank gang is pretty good. It's They were only briefly seen in the sequel at, and the, and the post credits scene, but it would have been cool if they made a larger role in, in Finding Dory. So, yeah. As soon as um, Nemo escapes, he was in a sewer. And then it's up to, um, her, and to him to find to find his dad, and then next thing you know, um, Dory ends up running into to, um, Nemo because Marlin gave up because he didn't get to see his, his son again. He thought he died, but in reality, he was still there. And then suddenly, out of nowhere, Dory ends up finding out that he's Nemo. He finally catched him, so it's up to Marlin, no, not Marlin, Nemo and Dory to find Marlin. And it wasn't until when they were running into a bunch of black um, sea bass, whatever, they were all big and, and blue, and they were all getting captured by... by Fisherman, I guess, and Nemo wanted to free them, and Marlin thought it was dangerous, so he decided to free them, but next thing you know, he was trapped in a net, and he was probably passed out, and Marlin thought he was dead, but in reality, he was just, just not conscious very well. And then, the whole movie ends up with a happily ever after. 
where Marlin and Nemo finally end up being back together as a as a family, and Dory ends up visiting them frequently. I guess she decided to stay with them. One thing I forgot to mention is that Dory isn't a love interest. It's probably because she's voiced by a lesbian. I guess that's probably why. But she's still a big supportive character in the series. And I have to admit, watching this movie again just really makes me have a nostalgia meltdown because I'm so glad to be an early 2000s kid watching this. Even the sequel did great, but in my opinion, the first movie is where my heart really melts when I see this movie. Really sad movie, really funny, it's a balance of a comedy and a drama, and Pixar knows how to make people cry and laugh. Way to go, Pixar, and I'm so happy that Finding Dory recently came out, both on DVD and Blu-ray. Just to show you the VHS version, here it is. It was also released on um, slipcover cases, and it's pretty rare to find on slipcover, but it's more common on clamshell cases. And what do you know? It doesn't have that blue label on top. This is the rare um, Nemo VHS to have the blue label, to not have the blue label. And the, and the print date is, let's see, aha, 10-9-03, so October 9th. And the back, let's see, there's Nemo right on his um, anemone, and he can't pronounce things right, I forgot about that. And he has a little fin, his lucky fin. And the animated short film that starts before the movie is the knick-knack. And there's, there's Nigel, and there's all the little sea turtles, and then there's Dory. I guess it's because Marlon wanted to tell the story of how he lost Nemo. And then here's the DVD. This is the original DVD from 2003. Believe it or not, there's a re-release of this along with the Blu-ray version, but I'm not going to get the re-release because I'd much rather have the two-disc collector's edition, also known as the original. The back here is a little different. Here we also have, we also have Marlon and that one picture again, and here we have... Um, we have one of the fish tank gang members, and then there's Nemo all the way on the bottom. The special features are pretty much more bizarre here. There's a lot more behind the scenes, deleted scenes, and storyboards, some uh, games. They even have another, um, let's see. Oh, exploring the reef with Jean Michel Cousteau. Now, that is my favorite part about the DVD. The Jean Michel Cousteau um, short film is my favorite one, and I should really recommend you to check it out if you own the original version of this. And if you own the newer version, I hope they have that there too, so... I really hope you have all enjoyed this video. Make sure to peace out and make sure you all comment and subscribe and stay tuned for more new videos for this coming year. This is the last movie review of the year. I know, 2017 is going to be a big year, so I hope you all peace out and rock on and have a nice day.